This is bittersweet. It's one of the last of the build vlogs. Get okay, on it. Okay, hit it. Good rivet. Good rivet. You're looking lined up, more or less. I mean, you gotta. It's gonna have to go in a bit, but. All right, Stevie, drift pins. Okay, here's the first one. Ah. That just went in like that. Wow, it's falling together. <laughs> what you gotta do wrong? Yeah, who built this airplane anyway? Uh -huh. Sometimes you need three brains. Or two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I'm the half. <laughs> oh, man, I'm putting all my weight into this. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot working with these guys. All right, good. And it's about to pay off. We're getting pretty close to the end of the build vlog series now. This is going to be the installation of the wings and we're going to be flying this airplane pretty soon. Today I'm working with team members Perry and John. They're brothers. Perry owns and flies an RV7 that he built and John is a recently retired engineer who's nearly ready for his private pilot flight test. All the wiring is pulled out of the way. So all of this wire is going to go through the one pole here okay. and we've got, we installed uh, more little bungs. Yeah. So we can feed all those through the bulkheads because the, the the wiring harness there's it comes through down under here and those grommets are pretty well full. Check this out. This is a pretty cool idea John had. So there's the grommets that we got in there, and to plan out the runs, we bundled up the wires, knowing what we'd have to fit. So we knew going in we weren't going to struggle to get some of these runs to work out because we we're pretty maxed out in there. Look at that, there's a lot going on, but it's getting there. Before we mate the spar into the fuselage receptacle, so it's all been cleaned with alcohol, all dried off, all blown out, so it's nice and clean. So now we're lubricating mating surfaces of the spar assembly with bow lube. So bow lube is a white powder. We could sprinkle the white powder on there, but what we did is we made a paste of bow lube and just uh, three-in-one oil. So we have like a suspension, I guess. Eh? So, so the idea here so. is this is it. And once we get her on, we're gonna try to keep her together now. Yeah, this is it. Pretty big step. Yes. No, you don't need uh, bull lube in these because we got steel bolts going in here. But you know we've got oil in there, so <laughs> someone's getting a duck call. Yeah. So the wings are going on today. But first, here's a few interesting tasks that we got done in the weeks leading up to this moment. This is a really cool thing. This is the exit for hot air out of the uh, engine compartment. This is new for the EXP 119 finishing kit and we got one of the first ones. Our quick build fuselage was built way before this option existed. So there were some minor modifications to existing parts required. We had to drill out the rivets and pull a couple parts off and trim them for clearance for the new dual exhaust. Then we needed to install some nut plates into the floor, which would allow us to install the tunnel closeout assembly. I think you definitely have a hard job. John did some yoga up there to get the nut plates in place and then drilled through the floor. I put Clecos in to hold them in place. And then I took care of hammering while John held the bucking bar. Okay, you ready for me to get on it? Yeah, I'm ready for you to be on it. On it. I remember being scared to death of denting skins when I first started hammering rivets, but I gotta say I'm pretty proud of how these ones went. That looks pretty perfect. And here's what the finished product looks like. We've labeled it cowl flap on the panel, and this is what it looks like when it's functioning. You can see between the exhaust there, it basically lets you open up the tunnel to dump hot air. And apparently there's no speed limit on this thing, so that's pretty cool. And then I worked with Perry to close out the bottom skin of the left wing. So when you lay the skin on, do you have to like lay it down and slowly fold it down like a... Yeah, you start it right here. Yeah. And then... Yeah. And you kind of fold it down. Yeah. So it's lifted up. Initially we had it like this. Right. So you get in there. 
Bring back memories of doing your plane or artificially inseminating cows. <laughs> yeah. I know how to be a vet now, I'll tell you that. And then we moved the wing back to the vertical jig to work on it. Completed lower skin. On to the next one. This is a hell of an invention you got here. Very impressed. One of the fun things about um, building one of these is you have to invent ways to hold parts so you can you know, do the processing on them, right? You leave it to your imagination. It's just a good thing. Did you have to do the same technique for the seven? Oh yeah, the only way it could be done. Very cool. Got a zillion different options for bucking bars. Sometimes it's very difficult to find the rivet that we're actually hammering. So what I do when I'm under there is I'll tap it. You, you have the gun on. And I'll feel it. And I'll say, is that the one? And you say, that's it. Yeah. And then I say, go. Okay. Hey, it's not on yet. <laughs> hey, on. We're just getting started. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. How was your flight? Uh, just like water skiing on a flat lake. It was beautiful. Excellent. More uh, forced approach? Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. Steep turn and uh, just practicing stall. Because my next flight is solo up there, so he wanted me to practice uh, the whole gamut. We're working with multiple sizes of rivets due to the varying thicknesses of structural components behind the skin. And we've got the plans oriented as we're looking at the wing, in this case, upside down. So, star, oh, so ready to drive. four, and then a four, four or five on the outer, yeah? yeah? We use scotch tape to keep the rivets in place, and I think that also protects the skin a little bit while hammering. Which one are we going to first? Yeah, I think that's it, yep. Okay, hit it. Is that too short? So those are just a bit underdone, those ones. Need a helper. So it's better to be a bit underdone and hit them again. Yep. Yeah, cool. We're looking at the depth and width of the newly squashed shop head, and we've got a Clico every second hole. Okay, hit it again. Okay. Good rivet? Good rivet. Yeah, it's nice up here. And once you get into the zone, you can really get working with a good, solid rhythm as a team. And we banged through this pretty quick. Okay, well, so this is what we got. We got the top row done. It worked out pretty nice. Then we took a lunch break, and it was such a beautiful day that Perry and I both decided we couldn't not go flying. So on a day like this, you gotta take a flying break, right? Yeah. I did some pattern work in the Harvard while Perry and John flew his beautiful RV7. The fuel tank has been pressurized. So the wing's upside down right now. So this fitting here is provided by vans and it goes into the vent line. The idea is you put a balloon on the supply line and uh, pressurize it. It's uh, been there for 36 hours. Yeah, about 36 so hours. the fuel sender glue job has integrity. All the fittings are all sealed and they have integrity, so uh, we're successful tests. Just to make sure the cap is in the leak source, we uh, tape, tape that up. So next, what we're gonna do is uh, re-pump up the uh, balloon so you can sort of see you know, how the test looks. Put the bicycle pump on the Schrader valve. And the instructions say that the balloon is your safety valve, so you can't over-pressurize the tank. All it takes is one pound to pressure test this tank. Where is all the air going? The balloon is not <laughs> blowing up. Oh, there she goes, all at once. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it worked better with a new balloon. All right, that's it. Let it sit there for 24 hours, and if the balloon is still the same size, then uh, you can assume that there's no leaks. Okay, and that pretty much catches us up to installing the wings. We're doing that with Pete. He's just off camera here holding the wing tip. He's a knowledgeable metal worker by trade. He built the first RV on the field here and had a hand in consulting or helping with all eight that are currently based in Windsor. This one we don't have a pedo tube to worry about, right? The other one we got a pedo tube on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put drift pins in to initially attach the wing to the uh, carry through. All right, now. Okay, so trailing edge has to go down a little bit, and Pete's just about right there. Okay, right about there. There we go. Okay. All right, everything's engaged. Can you see the uh, hole, Pete? They're looking lined up, more or less. I mean, you gotta, it's gonna have to go in a bit, but the rear one is lined up. Mm -hmm. Okay, hand me, me the first thing. Okay. 
Second, the second one. Okay, here, John. How much of a hole can you see? Okay, stand by. Okay, here, take this. Okay. All right, now, Pete, lift it. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Stop. Right there. Great. Yep, okay. One more, and this thing ain't moving anymore. No. We got the bolts in a cooler. <laughs> they were in the freezer up until a few minutes ago. Break the freezer over here, and uh, we'll get the first big guy in. And you guys came up with like freezing the bolts just to make them smaller. Is that like a wisdom thing, or how did you come yeah, up with that? Yeah, no, that's common practice. For close tolerance bolts, you gotta have, uh, ideally, you'd warm that up and shrink the bolts so that they should go, because they are very close tolerance. So and we don't want to be hammering these things. Well, it, we will be hammering them. With like there. a plastic mallet type of thing? Yeah. Or, yeah. That went uh, through pretty easy, a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah. nice fit. Okay, John. There you go, mallet, plastic. Okay. You're there, you're home. She's home. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, isn't that just fantastic? It's just right on the money. Even this one. Probably never ever fit. Okay, number four. Wow. Hey, that just went right through like nothing. No, they, they know where to go now. <laughs> one more. Wow. Back to the deep freeze, they're getting bigger. Through yet? No. It's just about. Now you are. Side one. Okay, the other very side. good, very good. That went well. Here we go, one, two, three, and up. All right, you call it, John. Yeah, that's, that's pretty damn good right there. Okay, get close. Stand by. All right, Stevie, drift pins. Here we go. Okay, here's the first one. Ah. That just went in like that. Okay, number two. Wow, it's falling together. Up, yeah, right there. <laughs> what, what, what you do wrong? Yeah, who built this airplane anyway? Okay. Yeah, one of my friends that built an eight said this was an arduous process for him. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Get, getting this lined up with the back. What the hell did you do wrong? Yeah. It's going together way too easily. <laughs> it went on really nice. Yeah. I was yeah. very impressed how this How long did you expect that to take? It would have been more, more finessing? This is the way it should go, man. Woo. I like the bolts on the outside, that's for sure. You can get your hands in here, eh, Perry? We can't do that. Yeah, the 14's got bi a, a bigger yeah, they, space than we had. They did their with. homework on this airplane. The bugger. Oh, yeah. All right, well done, chap. Then we're going to clean the threads because uh, when we go to torque them, we don't want them covered with lube and stuff like that. We'll clean the threads and then we're gonna partially torque all the nuts on, but not finish torque yet. To save me trying to explain it, I had John talk through the hows, what's, and why's of torque settings. Yeah, so the A and nine bolts, which were the big ones that we had, this is inch pounds, this is foot pounds. So we were, you know, the middle of this range is about 75. There's always a range, they'll okay. always give you a range. At the end, the small bolt yeah. on the spar, yeah, that's what these guys right here. So we used about 14 and a half or so. They, they give you a range because the size of the bolts, you know, really depends on the temperature. If they're hot, they're going to be larger. If it's cold, they're going to be smaller. So, so they specify all these things. These, based on dry thread. Yeah, these, it, you know, it should say somewhere in a chart whether it's dry or lubricated. Right. And uh, in our case, they're all they're all dry for the wing spar. So there it is set to 75. So we're going uh, 75 foot pounds on that. A little more exertion required, okay. Oh man, I'm putting all my weight into this. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, okay. We had to do that 16 times in total, four big ones and four little ones per side. My whole body was sliding trying to do some of the big ones on the floor, and it was tricky trying to work around the wing fairing mounting flanges. I can't pull against 75 pounds. <laughs> well, how about if you get rid of the extension? Oh yeah, right. right Perry, what about just getting rid of the extension and going right to here? A little bit further away right there. Yeah, try that. Mm -hmm. Yep, good call, John. Good idea, John. Sometimes you need three brains. Or two and a half. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I'm the half. <laughs> yep. 
And around now, I had one of the GoPros fail. This is a classic case of the struggle is real to capture while doing. So I tossed that camera and I knew I still had the chesty rolling to capture the final stage, which was going back and checking the torque on each one and then marking them done with two colors. There'll always be that nagging thing. Is that, did I get them all? <sighs> like every torque is important, but these are critical. probably main spar, <laughs> pretty critical. All right, underneath now. And it's a little bit embarrassing how shaky I am while I try to get this shot pulling the strap of the chesty while I'm doing a sit up with no hands. All right, good, okay. And equally important is keeping track of bolts that are not torqued. I think the thing about the uh, prop was you need a crow's foot. Yeah. So it's a bit of a process. Pierce has got one. So that reminded me to check to make sure my label tag was still there from when we installed the prop, but not torque or lock wire it. And now it's come down to the final tasks, which are running the wiring, getting ready for the fuel flow test, getting her outside for the first engine run. Coming up in this series, we get ready for the first engine run and the final inspection. And then we're going to be test flying, and I think we have a good shot at getting this airplane to air venture. So until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. Okay, so I got a couple cameras rolling, we're just going to talk through this. So tonight we are calibrating the fuel tanks, and I have crazy hair. How many times have I said that during this vlog series?